From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Welcome to this Cube Conversation. I'm Lisa Martin, and today joining me is Cube alumni, the co-CEO of MemSQL, Raj Verma. Raj, welcome back to the Cube. Thank you, Lisa. It's uh, great to be back, and it's uh, so good to see you. Likewise. So since we last saw each other, a lot of changes going on everywhere. You're now the co-CEO of MemSQL. The CEO's role is changing dramatically in the, this year and the last few months. Talk to us about some of the ch those changes. Yeah, where do I even start? Uh, I was just uh, you know listening to something, or watching something, and it said uh, you know in leadership, one thing that they never tell you is you don't find the event; the event finds you. And, uh, you know, it was uh, four and a half, almost five months ago, we were at our SKO in Half Moon Bay. And if someone had said to me then that we'll be quarantined for five months following that, and most more likely seven months, I, I probably wouldn't have uh, believed them. And if I did, I would have burst out crying. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's been uh, sort of uh, uh, a lot of change for us. Uh, the one thing is for sure, as, uh, as the CEO, I probably made more compelling decisions in the last uh, four months than I probably made in the year prior to that. So there is a lot of um, <clears throat> decisions, important decisions that are uh, being made now. I think the, the thing that's impressed me the most about uh, just the human race per se in the last four and a half, five months is the resilience, you know, how the adaptability um, of, uh, of just the community and the race at large. Uh, there is a lot of goodness that we've seen um, happen. Um, I think there is a greater appreciation for the life that we sort of had. And I think when everything does uh, one day come back to normal, we would be a lot more appreciative and uh, nicer just uh, as, as individuals. Now, uh, as CEO, I think the first, uh, first order of uh, duty for me was to embrace uh, our employees and my colleagues. Um, it's a trying set of circumstances for them. Uh, worrying about um, their health, the health of their aged uh, parents, of their families' uh, well-being, and uh, whether they have a job or not, and how the economic environment would, would pan out. So I think it was just uh, my number one priority at the start and, and continues uh, to be till today with the uh, were our colleagues and the employees of MemSQL. And the first few decisions that we made were 100% employee centric. Uh, none of the big ones that was uh, taking the pledge of no uh, uh, retrenchments or uh, no workforce reduction for 90 days uh, to begin with, and we've uh, we've continued that. We haven't uh, we haven't uh, really uh, uh, reduced any uh, employee headcount at all. The second was to go uh, in turn embrace our customers and uh, deliver to the promise that we had in normal times and help them get back to as much of a normalcy as they could. And, uh, and the third was to do whatever we could to use our technology, our efforts, our resources uh, to, to help uh, society at large, whether it was through track and tracing projects that we did for a large telco or uh, uh, you know, a telco in the Middle East, a telco in Asia, and we put our resources there. Uh, or it was just uh, using our platform to heighten uh, the public awareness around Juneteenth and other uh, sort of social uh, issues, because I think uh, in in times of uh, of almost societal isolation, using your platform and being a voice for what you stand for is more important than ever before. And uh, and and those were really the three uh, three things that stand out uh, apart from just normal decisions, normal decisions that you make to make sure that uh, you're well capitalized, that uh, you know you have enough cash to run your business, uh, that uh, all the fundamentals of the business are, are, are uh, sound. Um, so yeah. So lots of decisions in a, on a massively accelerated scale, more than in the last 10 years, but, but big strategic decisions made in a, in a quick time period for employees, for customers, for how do we use our platform? How, what, what is the key that you need in order to make those decisions as strategically as you can like that? Yeah, um, you've got to lens it through what is the why um, 
of the organization. Our why is very simple. We want to be the platform of decision making or what we call the platform of now, where we can marry historical information with the real time operational data being streamed in uh, to your organization and be able to deliver up um, reports and insights that you need for quick decision making in other organizations. So delivering up the now. <clears throat> Internally, um, when when sort of um, presented with options to make decisions, uh, the lens that I've used is, uh, you know, what's in the best interest of our employees, what's in the best interest of our customers, and what is in the best interest of our investors and stakeholders. And if you apply that lens, the decisions aren't actually um, that difficult. You will never have 100% of the data that you need uh, to make a decision. So, you know, lensing it through your priorities becomes extremely, extremely important. The other aspect is that uh, having data, though, having said that, having data now to make decisions is more important than ever before because you do not have the, you know, sort of physical cues to depend on or clues to depend on. I'm still finding it hard to read the digital clues on Zoom or Google Hangouts or Teams or what have you. Uh, so you just have to have a, a very steeped in data decision making, marrying it with what what is it that uh, you stand for as an organization. Um, and the third vector that we've put to this is uh, very simple. We as an organization stand for authenticity. Uh, we like to simplify rather than complicate. And uh, we need to uh, do you know, demonstrate courage uh, over comfort. And uh, those are those are the other vectors that we use to make prior, you know, majority of our strategic decisions. So data for years, you know, you've heard this all over the tech circuit, Raj, data is the new gold, data is the new oil. Now you're saying it's even more important than ever in this unprecedented <coughs> time. How does MemSQL help customers get access to as much data as they can to make really fast strategic decisions to not just you know survive in this mode but thrive yeah i i think two questions you know the what is the uh, you know data and the value of data and you're absolutely right the, the value of data uh, now is more than ever before and also the amount of data that is now being produced is more than ever before so it's um, it's actually uh, a pretty pretty non trivial issue uh, to solve and, and I think the, the first thought is that you can't solve the problems of tomorrow with the technology of yesterday. You cannot solve the problems of tomorrow using a technology that was built for a different era, which was built 45 years ago, 25 years ago. And uh, you know some of the, the um, tenants of the technology are still steeped in, uh, let's just call it heritage. So first and foremost, the realization that the problems of tomorrow need the tools of now uh, and the talent of now um, and the management of now and the leadership of now to have to solve it <coughs> is um, is paramount um, what we do as uh, as a technology company and a lot of companies in our genre called hard tech is exactly that is hard tech uh, it takes a lot of talent it takes a lot of time resources money clarity of thought to build something which which will solve um, the problems of today and of tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and today the challenges that we actually have is uh, uh, the real time nature of decision making, of interactions, of experience, of security, of compliance um, are more exaggerated than ever before. Um, and how do you marry real time information with historical information in the cheapest, easiest to deploy flexible architecture is uh, of paramount importance. And that's exactly what we do, Lisa. We, we give you a database that is uh, arguably the fastest in the world from a query speed uh, standpoint. It scales more than any other database uh, in our genre. It has data governance by virtue of us being SQL. It's hybrid, multi-cloud, so it doesn't lock you in. And um, it's uh, among the easiest to use. Um, so, you know, I don't know what the future would bring, uh, Lisa, but one thing I can assure you is these, there are five things which wouldn't change, which is 
you would, uh, developers would uh, prefer fast over slow, uh, cheap over fast, uh, flexible over rigid, uh, ease of use over complexity of use, and a secure, safe platform uh, versus the alternative. And uh, and that, uh, if you have those five tenants, I think you'd be pretty uh, well-versed with uh, solving the problems of today and tomorrow. So you mentioned real time a minute ago, and that's, I think right now during the COVID-19 crisis, there's nothing that highlights the urgency of which we need information real time. It's not going to help us if it's 24 or 48 hours old. How does MemSQL deliver real time insights to customers, whether it's a telecommunications company looking to do contact tracing or a bank? Yeah, um, so let me start with a couple of examples. A very large telephone uh, provider or telecommunication provider in the States uh, used us for or uses us for network telemetry. So, you know, how many calls did Lisa make? How many texts did she send? What time? Uh, without, of course, the privacy uh, attached to it. When did she experience a call drop? <clears throat> What's the coverage at her home? Um, is is the you know sort of mobile tower close to her place going to go down, and what would be the inconvenience? All of that. So copious amounts of data required uh, to to really deliver customer experience, and it's a hard enough problem because the amount of data, as you can imagine, is extremely, extremely, extremely large. But when COVID nineteen struck, the the sort of uh, the data became that much more important because now it was a tool that you could use as a company to be able to describe or, or follow cohorts of subscribers in hotbeds like New York at that time and see which states they were actually, let's call it fleeing to or moving to. And uh, to be able to do that in near real time was not good enough because you had to actually do it in real time. To be able to track where the PPEs were in near real time was not good enough. It had to be real time, and you know to you know, track where the ventilators were in um, in real near real time wasn't good enough. You just needed to to do that, um, and and you know I think that probably is one of the biggest and uh, examples of uh, real time that we have uh, in the recent um, past and something that we are most proud of. How do we do that? We built this um, hard tech based on first principles. So we didn't try and put a lipstick on a pig. We didn't try and re-architect a 45-year-old technology or a 15-year-old technology. We just said that if we actually had a plain sheet of paper, what would, be, uh, what would we do? Uh, and we said uh, the need of the future is going to be fast over slow, as I said, you know, cheap over expensive, flexible over rigid, uh, safe over the other alternative and ease of use and uh, and that's what we've built and uh, and the world will see um, uh, the amount of difference that we make to organizations and more importantly to society uh, which uh, which is very near and dear to my heart and uh, yeah that's what I'm extremely proud and optimistic about talk to me about some of the customer conversations that you're having now I've known you for many years you're a very charismatic speaker as you were saying a few minutes ago it's hard to read body language on Zoom and video conferences. How are those customer conversations going and how have they changed? Um, a, a, a lot has changed. I think there are a couple of um, aspects that you touch upon. Uh, one is just getting used to your digital work day. Uh, you know, initially we thought it was two weeks and um, it's great, you don't have the commute and all the rest of it. And then you started to realize, and, and the other thing was everyone was available there's no one was traveling, there were no birthday parties, there's no picking up a kid from baseball or school or swimming or what have. So everyone was available and we were like, wow, this is great, no commute, everyone's available. Uh, let's, let's start meeting and interacting. And, and then you realize after a while that this digital workday is extremely, extremely exhausting. And if you aren't deliberate about it, it can fill your entire day and, um, and you don't get much done. So one of the things that I've started to do is I don't get on a, a digital call unless of course it's a customer or something extremely, extremely important uh, till 11 a.m. That's my thinking time. You know, it's just, you know, eight to 11 is um, in thoughts and people I want to call uh, rather than, you know, my calendar describing what my priorities should be. And it's, it's the same thing for our customers as well in a, in a slightly different way. 
they are trying to decide and and come to terms with not only what today means to them but what the realities of today means for tomorrow i'll give you an example of a very very large bank in the united states uh, which consumer bank <clears throat> which uh, essentially believed in the fact that customer relations uh, were the most and customer relationship managers were the most important role for them they are thinking about moving to bots so the fact that you would be interacting with bots when you reach your bank is going to be a reality. There is no if, and, and buts about it. A very, very large company um, uh, providing financial services is now trying to see how do you make the digital platforms more responsive? How do you make analytics faster, more responsive, and collaborative? Um, those are really... Uh, the the focus of C-suite attention rather than which building do we call after our company and add towers to it, or uh, you know what coffee uh, machine should we buy for the organization, or should we have a whiskey bar or a wine bar in our office? Um, now the uh, you know just the mundaneness of those decisions are coming up. And uh, now the, the focus is how do we not only survive, to your point, Lisa, but thrive in the digital collaboration economy. And it's, uh, it's going to be about responsiveness, it's going to be about speed, and it's going to be about security and compliance. And at the end of the day, kind of wrapping things up here, COVID or not, the customer <laughs> experience is critical, right? It's, it's the lifeblood of what your organization delivers the success of your customers and their ability to make major business impact is what speaks to MemSQL's capabilities. So a customer experience I know is always near and dear to your heart. And it sounds like it's something that you are have, have modified for the situation, but really MemSQL focused on not just the customer experience, but your employee experience as well. Well, that's exactly it. And I think if you do right by the employees, they'll do right by the customers. And uh... I would, uh, I would any day, any day, put the uh, employee first uh, lens to any decision that we make, and uh, and uh, and that's paid off for us in spades. Uh, we've got a, a family environment. Uh, I genuinely, genuinely care about uh, every single employee of MemSQL and their families, and um, and we've communicated uh, often. We have listened. We have learned. Um, there, these are unprecedented times. Uh, there isn't a manual to go through COVID-19 work environment. Uh, and, and I think the realization that we just don't know what tomorrow would bring is actually very liberating because it just frees you from rinsing and repeating and further feeding your prejudice and biases to getting up every day and say, let me learn as much as I can about the current um, environment, current realities, lens it through our priorities, and you know, make the best decision uh, that we can. And uh, and if we are wrong, accept it and correct it. Um, nothing too intellectual, but uh, it's in the simplicity that uh, sometimes uh, you find a lot of solace. Yeah, simplicity in these times would be great. I think you're. I, I like how you talked about the opportunities. There's a lot of positive. COVID catalysts that are coming from this. And we want to thank you for sharing some time with us today, talking about the changing role of the C-suite and the opportunities that it brings. Raj, it's been great to have you on theCUBE. As always, Lisa, it's a pleasure. Thank you. For the co-CEO of MemSQL, Raj Verma, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching a CUBE Conversation.